This video covers the solutions to the midterm 2 exam of uh, 4472 in fall 2017. Um, problem 1 has uh, 3 parts and this is uh, part A of problem 1. So what is given is a, um, a converter which um, looks like a flyback converter and you can actually solve it as a flyback. Uh, but if you don't recognize it as flyback, that's fine. We can just solve this uh, from basic principles. So given the dot on the primary side at the top as shown here, um, the first uh, question is to figure out where the dot should be placed in the secondary. Um, usually dot um, placement is uh, governed by the flex continuity requirement. So let's go ahead and try the flex continuity. When the switch was on, the current was entering the dot on the primary side. So this is the magnetizing current. And when the switch is turned off, what we need is a current that enters the dot in the other winding, which is the secondary winding. Looking at the secondary, the diode is, uh, for the diode placement, the current will only flow in this direction. Okay. So which means the current can only uh, enter the secondary winding at the bottom. And since we want the current to enter a dot, we have to place the dot at the bottom so that once the switch is turned off uh, on the primary side, the diode conducts a current that enters the dot um, as uh, shown here. So therefore, the correct placement of the dot is at the bottom. Um, so I'll just put the dot here. So th there is another, uh, you can also look at the um, equal volts per turn. Uh, condition also so if you if by mistake if you put the dot at the top which means when the switch is on you apply a positive voltage at the dot on the primary therefore it will be a positive voltage at the dot on the secondary as well and that magnitude would be 0 0.5 times 100 or 50 volts that will forward by the diode and you will be shorting a 50 volts source to a 25 volt source and that uh, of course is invalid so from that perspective also we can confirm that the dot should be placed at the bottom. So with the dot correctly placed at the bottom, when the switch is on, the diode will be reversed by a, by a voltage, which is a combination of the sum of this 25 volts plus the induced uh, 50 volts. So there is no violation there. Okay, so that's part um, the first part of this question. The second part also asks you to calculate what value of duty ratio will result in valid steady state. Now, since I have a voltage source on the secondary side, if I had a capacitor under resistance, like in a regular flyback converter, then um, any value of D within the zero to one range uh, would be valid, would be valid, and we'll get an output voltage corresponding to that duty ratio. But since it is given that the diode connects to a voltage source, then there is only one unique value of uh, duty ratio, and that's what we should calculate. Now, one way to calculate this from basic principle is to draw the voltage um, V primary, the dot is here. Define V primary as um, with this voltage polarity shown. So the waveform of V primary would be, okay, so I'll call this as 0.5, um, well, we'll call this as D. Well, this is D and this will be 1 and the time is in uh, T over TS. So during the DTS period, the primary voltage, which I defined this way, would be uh, the input voltage or 100 volts. Okay. There's been negative in the off interval and that voltage for this dot polarity, uh, we prime, the dot is at the the undotted end is at the positive terminal, therefore it is negative voltage on the secondary equal to 25 volts. So this voltage here would be um, the secondary voltage uh, divided by N. So this would be minus 25 um, divided by N, which is 0 0.5, right? So N equals 0.5. So that is equal to minus 50 volts during the off interval. And uh, so this is V primary. And if you write the volt second balance equation for the primary winding voltage, it would be 100 uh, times D um, minus 50 times 1 minus D equals 0. 
that's the whole second equation collect all the d terms together you get d 100 here this is another plus 50 and that is equal to uh, 50 volts so so it will be d of 50 or 150 or d of one third is the correct answer um, we can also think of this as a flyback converter um, if we did that um, it is a flyback converter so if you recognize that as a flyback converter you could have directly written uh, the flyback input output um, voltage equation that is v over vn equals n times d over 1 minus d and um, so substituting for n to be 0.5 d over 1 minus d equals v over is 25 and vn is 100 okay. so from that you can solve for d and you will again get d to be one third this is part b of problem one uh, here we are given a converter that we are not really studied in detail in class but that should not be a problem because this can be easily solved from the basic uh, fundamental principles of isolated converters uh, in fact this is uh, a very small variation in fact it's very similar to another converter that we studied um, as part of the uh, solutions to the sample exam to uh, midterm two um, so what is given is a two switch converter and we are given that the two switches are switched uh, complementarily meaning when the main switch say s1 is on then this switch s2 is off okay. so when we say that it is also important to remember that um, when the main switch is on both this MOSFET as well as this diode across that uh, the other switch they are both turned off okay. Okay. so when the switch is on when S1 is on then the voltage across the primary is the full 100 volts uh, input voltage there will be a corresponding induced voltage here and um, um, that that uh, forward by the diode and supports the inductor current and so on okay. and when the switch is turned off on the primary S1 is turned off uh, because of flex continuity where we need uh, magnetizing current to continue to enter the dot which is not possible on the secondary side because of this diode here therefore the current will flow through this diode um, now when the switch is on this the S2 can conduct depending on the direction it will be either the diode or the MOSFET we want a current in this direction initially so this diode will conduct charging the capacitive voltage VC um, so we can draw the V primary based on this information uh, but there is usually a question that about um, isn't the capacitor always charging uh, would that, wouldn't that violate the current second balance for the this capacitor uh, it does not violate anything because um, when the when this complement of the MOSFET and the diode um, they are given gate right then initially of course the current is through the diode but eventually within that off interval the current would reverse direction and flow through the MOSFET discharging the capacitor okay so let's go ahead and draw the V primary waveform let's define it uh, with this polarity V primary so the and we can use that to calculate the uh, the capacitor voltage VC okay, so V primary and the D is given as 0.25 so I'll call this as this point is 0.25 and this time is one uh, scale is d over ts um, during the dts period the input the v primary is just the input voltage which is 100 volts okay and the magnitude during the off interval uh, we're talking about this primary voltage so the dotted end with respect to the ground is always at 100 volts potential and the the other end the undotted end now gets connected to VC through the second switch therefore the voltage would be Vn at the top minus VC at the bottom so I'll um, write that as which should be um, lower magnitude so because it's a longer duration so the magnitude should be lower than the voltage during the on interval um, so that would be Vn minus VC or 100 minus VC Vn is 100 so to solve for VC, we'll write the old second balance equation across the primary voltage. So that would be 100 times 0.25 in the DTS period um, plus 
it's 100 minus pc is the magnitude during the off interval for a duration of 1 minus c which is nothing but 0 0.75 so collecting the terms uh, together we have um, 100 this is 25 plus um, this 100 times 70 0.75 gives another 75 here that is equal to vc times 0 0.75 or VC equals 100 over 0.75 and that is 133.33 uh, volts. Okay. So that is the answer for the first part VC. Okay, so we can um, then go on to the next uh, part of this problem which is to calculate the output voltage VO. For that, uh, we normally write or draw the waveform of V rect and V rect average should be equal to the output voltage because VL average is zero in steady state, DC steady state. Okay, therefore, let's go ahead and draw the waveform of V rect as uh, defined in the, uh, in the schematic. So during the on interval, which is uh, 0 0.25, so one is here, T over T is, um, the voltage V-rect is the same as the secondary voltage because this diode is forward biased. So the that voltage will be the turns ratio 0.2 times the applied primary voltage which is 100 volts or 20 volts. Okay. So this would be 100 times 0.2 is 20 volts. Okay. And during the off interval for the entire 1 minus DTS interval so the voltage is zero because the, the secondary voltage becomes negative and um, this diode is reverse biased so it, the v rect waveform does not become negative in fact this inductive current free wheels through this diode which means the voltage v rect during that entire one minus dts period is zero so it's not negative uh, it's so many students write this as a negative voltage but it's actually just zero volts during the off interval so that gives us V rect average, which is also equal to the output voltage VO to be 20 volts times uh, D, which is 0.25 or just 5 volts output. Okay, then we come to part C of problem one. Um, here we are given um, a coil that is uh, that has 10 turns and it is wound on a core which is made of ideal magnetic material so that makes the problem actually simple um, the core also has an air gap of one millimeter and the core area is given as 100 uh, square millimeter and um, we are also given the current that passes through the coil it's a triangular current and we need to calculate the resulting voltage and the flex in the core okay. so the reluctance of the core would normally be the reluctance of the material plus the reluctance of the air gap. Now because of the ideal magnetic material its permeability is infinity therefore the reluctance due to the magnetic material itself is zero therefore the entire reluctance is only due to the reluctance of the gap. So therefore the uh, inductance L of this structure of this coil is uh, just mu naught corresponding to the air gap uh, n squared core area ac over the length of the air gap okay. if the magnetic core magnetic material was not considered ideal then we'll have to consider the reluctance corresponding to this term as well and that will also figure in the inductance calculation but for us it is simpler so mu naught is 4 pi 10 to the minus 7 um, n is uh, 10 therefore n squared is uh, is 10 squared um, core area AC is 100 square millimeter so in meter square it will become 100 10 to the minus 6 and divided by the air gap which is 1 millimeter or 1 10 to the minus 3 so if you calculate this this comes out to be 12.57 micro henry so once we have the inductance, then we can calculate, actually we can use that to calculate both of these waveforms. Okay. Right. So we just calculated um, L 
equals 12.57 micro henry the voltage across the coil can be calculated as uh, l uh, vl uh, voltage across the inductance which is a uh, coil voltage which is a coil uh, l di over dt okay so it's a triangular waveform it's a linearly rising part here linearly fa falling part uh, here uh, therefore it will be a positive voltage during the rising part and a negative voltage during the falling part we just need to find out what the slope is and um, uh, so this would be 12.57 10 to the minus 6 times the slope when the current is rising it rises from minus 2 to plus 2 for a total change of 4 amperes in a duration of 5 microsecond this is 5 t is in microsecond so over 5 10 to the minus 6 which cancels with this and you get this to be um, 10.05 volts it's 12.57 times 0.8 so this is during the um, positive interval the voltage positive interval and you can also do a similar calculation uh, 12.57 10 to the minus 6 times changes by minus 4 during the duration of same 5 microsecond in the off interval to result in minus 10.05 so that is the negative interval All right, so we'll just draw the waveform. Uh, okay, I need space here. Um, okay. So it is 10.05 and minus 10.05. So, okay, so that is the voltage across the coil. volts okay all right so we had again l to be 12.57 micro henry and then to calculate the flux uh, probably the simplest one to use once since you already know l and i would be this equation n phi of t equals l i of t okay or the waveform for phi of t would simply be l which is 12.57 10 to the minus 6 divided by um, n which is 10 okay. so just multiply this by the given waveform of i of t okay. so since i has a magnitude of uh, 2 and minus 2 so this is just going to be 1.257 times 2 which is uh, 2.514 okay. so it's going to have the same exact wave shape as the current um, okay, going from So that is the flux waveform and the magnitude the positive highest value is uh, 2.514 10 to the minus 6 or micro webers okay. and the negative part is minus 2.514 micro webers okay. that's the that's the final answer